Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 7 of Kerbal Space Program Modded Let's Play series. As always you can find the mod list in the description. But we're back and where were we? Uh, let's see. So I'm gonna just post commentary again. Uh, continue this double speed. So I built my new space plane. It's all looking good. <clears throat> I just headed back to this target. But again, as you'll see shortly, this doesn't exactly work out again how I intended. Not able to reduce speed enough. But I do remedy that sort of on a semi permanent basis after this mission. We're approaching, we're at a much better height, we're only at about 3,000 and a bit feet. We've got all the science on board, I'm trying to do some of it. Just pinning them so I can run them as and when I need to. Closing in now. So I'm running at just about 40% throttle at the moment. Just trying to keep my speed down. Taking some readings over this area. Was planning to transmit them when we land. <clears throat> Thanks as always to Approaching Nirvana for allowing us streamers to use their music. I use Audacity to put together a little sort of mix, sort of, and then just have them, but I have two 200 minute mixes which I use throughout my videos. So just trying to slow up, the engines have been killed, gears are out, try and slow down enough. Killing my airspeed. Pretty gently still, but even so, it still takes my plane to pieces. Ah, the joys. So I mean, I can run some experiments here anyway. Whatever's still connected to the ship, I can recover it with the cockpit. Decide to recover this time rather than uh, reset the mission. Take a bit of a hit money wise, but there you go. It's f for science. I don't think I can... Can I EVA here? Not even sure. I can definitely keep a crew report. Oh yeah, I can still EVA. I was lucky that the crew hatch landed upwards. 
and now I recover the vessel. Keep all the science. So, problems with the planes. The wheels just aren't up to much really. Have to be perfect on the landing. There's no forgiveness in them, which kind of sucks. So gained a bit of science, enough science to be able to unlock one thing. So <clears throat> I'm looking. I've still got all these. I've got like four plane missions here. So I'm looking at how can I have a better landing impact speed with what I have because I don't have that much available at the moment I mean the plane itself seems to be reasonably fine I can keep it under control one thing I definitely need to do is be able to reduce speed better so I add a couple of air brakes to the wings which is fine but that still isn't gonna you know reduce the impact of landing that much if I don't get it spot on <clears throat> So I'm having a bit of a think here. And I mean, these are the only main wheels that I've got available apart from the unretractable ones, which can take a bigger impact, especially that one. So I'm looking and thinking, and it's like, is it really realistic? definitely got a better uh, meters per second impact tolerance so I have a go at fitting it and it's kind of ugly as hell and I'm worried about the rest of my stuff they're not really that tall and they don't really give me that much clearance and like any big hills or anything like that it's gonna cause issues really so it's time to go look at the R&D tree I think yeah I'm not really too happy with that We saved the changes anyway and come across so R&D and what I'm really looking for here is aerospace landing stuff I mean that's just aerodynamics that's aerodynamics but in the landing section we have the medium landing gears <clears throat> which are much better at ever withstanding impact that's 90 science and that's the only thing I'm going to be able to unlock at the moment and I do still need to unlock this heavy rocketry stuff plus the fuel systems so I can get the bigger tanks all the drop tanks are cool you can attach them to the outside of the main tanks have them feed into the main tank and then drop them off as you go up Not really too sure what these things are at the moment, but we'll be looking into that. And just always get sucked in by the R&D trees, like ooh, ooh, new thing, ooh, ooh, want some that, ooh. So yeah. That's the landing gears, it gives me better landing legs for aircraft as well. And this is something else I need that I'm like, ah, okay, mech jet. Mm, kind of need to unlock this because that gives me the maneuver planner through mech jet, which makes life a hell of a lot easier than flight computer for Marut Tech. But I need the wheels. and decide to buy it. So now I can switch out all of three of these sets of wheels. So there we go. Much bigger, much more and wieldy looking but 
much safer. And do the front one too. And that's good. It gives us a lot more ground clearance as well for uneven landings, which is the main thing that seems to be ripping off my wings and then everything else falls apart after that. So we can try again and we're back up to two times speed and we will try to get out. There you go. See the brakes with the brakes group activated, the air brakes come into effect and that's going to help us with our landings considerably. So back to waypoint manager, back to the same waypoints. And this is more of a test. I mean, if I had wanted to at this point, I could have, you know, taken off again and gone and done another mission because we hold so much fuel in this craft. So we're full blast off the takeoff because we've got good wheels now so we can handle it. Ooh, a bit wobbly, wobbly, wobbly. And up. Nice and easy. So we're going to pin the wheels, just set it there. And get ourselves on our way to our contract. So it just gains some altitude first. So I mean, this plane will pretty much now suffice for most missions up to about halfway around the planet. Um, at least for now. And then I'm going to be really looking at the Mark III, Mark IV, especially the Mark IV system, which will get us into space comfortably. And once I have them, I'm quite happy to run space tourism stuff because at that point you pretty much recover the entire vessel apart from any boosters you decide to add on. So as you can see, as per normal, time, <coughs> time accelerating through to the target. Now this episode isn't just space plane mission, but I am going to do something else with regards to the network around curbing. A few adjustments and then speed back up. <laughs> Pick up the nose a bit, drop it down and go. In future I will be uh, speeding these uh, space plane missions where I have to fly for a distance up to um, three times speed. It's just these early episodes so I just want to give you a good idea of what I'm doing. Um, I'm pinning all the science experiments here. Well, at least the accelerometer and the science bay because think that's what I need for this mission. Not that much further to go. It's actually not that far away these ones. I call these space planes, but they aren't really space planes because there's no way this thing is going to get anywhere near space. It's only going to really, I mean, I've tried these before and they, at this sort of level of plane, they just sort of top out at about 10. You can push 12,000 meters, but then it just all falls apart from there, basically. So we're approaching the target again. When you fly directly from the base, it's not that far at all.
Ah, so this approach again. And hopefully this time, I mean with the medium wheels, if I can't land it now. Phew, wow, I should just give up, really. So we're already down to about maybe 60% throttle. Just trying to keep the airspeed down. Even though I've now got air brakes, which will help immensely. Okay, approaching the target. Throttle is down below 50%, probably 40-ish now. Maybe 45. <clears throat> and getting ready to land it. We're at 1600 meters, so the gear comes down. Huge landing gear. Kill the engines. And then when I put the brakes action group on, the air brakes will come up too. I'm just still trying to kill speed the old fashioned way. Coming in to land now. At about 100 meters per second. Just watching my shadow on the ground so I can see whereabouts I am. It's difficult to see where you are in relation to the ground sometimes. If I land anywhere around here, I can coast around. There you go, the action brakes action group is on and the air brakes are deployed and the speed is dropping and we're at about 50 meters per second, which is fine with these wheels. I just slowly point straight down. No problem whatsoever. So we stop there. So it breaks off and we are going to coast over to each of the objective sites. <coughs> That's the magnetometer as well. We also need the Prismat 2 hot thing. Yeah. So that's all the science. And we're extending the antenna so we can transmit stuff. Like that. That's the pressure scan. So this is the one we're doing. So we're in that zone now, break action group on. So we need a magnetometer. I'm transmitting that. And now we're going to come across spin round because the other targets are over there. We did still manage to get the one target from the crash site because we crashed at the site we needed to be out for the magnetometer for it. So now it's just the seismic readings from over here and this contract will be done. So, magnetometer wasn't what I needed to do there, it was the seismic reading. That's that one done. Just one to go. Okay, brakes on, transmit, done, contract complete. Awesome. So, recover that vessel. 
So on to the second part of what we're doing today. Now this is back to what, uh, what we do with the network. So the satellites that are currently in place use the normal communitron antennas to transmit. That's good enough for the distance they are from the KSC. But what about communicating with other vessels that are further away at the moment, i.e. the Moon and Minmus, our moons? Um, them antennas will not reach that far. So I'm just going to accept some contracts, just looking through what's available and what I can actually do. Surveys, I'm going to not do that because it's above 18,000 feet. Got explore Kerbin. We've got this one. So take that for later. We could definitely do this one, I think. That's a rendezvous mission. So we're looking at rescue missions as well now, so we're gonna take them. That will come up in a later episode. So that's what we got active at the moment. So the one we took point satellite dish out from Kerbin, it means have a satellite network pointing away from Kerbin. So you can point at either the moon or Minmus or whatever, basically. But at the same time, we have this low resolution scan of Kerbin, which can be done with the Scansat science jobby. So back to the uh, VAB, and we're going to look at putting another Comsat. So this is going to be the Comsat relay. Which basically relay signals from further afield back into the Kerbin network so we can stay in contact with the KSC. So this is going to have more powerful dishes on it so we need a bit more power so we're putting three batteries on this one. And then we're going to put a small ish fuel tank there for final manoeuvring. Uh, probably stick a terrier or an ant. The choices go with a terrier this time. Just in case we need to do a bit of extreme manoeuvring. So four solar panels on the batteries. Oop, and that messed it up. Gotta be careful where you place them. If you place them in between it actually goes inside. really annoying if you look underneath here when I get this battery off it was stuck to the battery there so we try it again and try and get them stuck to the outside of the batteries like that nice so this is what we need the scansat altimetry sensor we don't need four of them that's for sure. I'm going to stick one on the outside here. And we're going to put a dish on the other side here. I mean, that's the big, big, big one. And that's kind of insane. Then we're going to stick the smaller dishes on the outside here. We're going to have a comms out there and the smaller communitron there. <clears throat> and that's okay, it kind of looks like Voyager <laughs> at the moment. 
fine. I'm still thinking away. So when I'm sat here looking around, I'm thinking, thinking. And I'm thinking I kind of want some extra solar panels, flat ones that aren't all the time there, just to make sure I keep enough charge. I'm looking at my stuff thinking this is going to use a lot of electricity. But anyway, so we have the decoupler. Not the stack separator, so there's less force involved. And then we're going to use our Airstream protective shower. So this is the fairing, basically. And it just about covers the big dish, and then we can go like that. So it's quite a heavy little payload here. And as always, I forget the reaction wheel. So that needs to go on. That sits on top of it. Need mech jab for sure. Only one there. And we could probably put a flight engineer right about there. If I remember it. Side on a computer flight unit instead, which is silly. As we'll see later. So that decoupler will decouple the fairing base anyway, which is good. So now it's time for fuel tanks. And I kind of have a double think about this and I'm thinking, hmm, maybe with the payload weight that we're going out here, we need a multi-coupler. So we'll go with the tri-coupling. I don't want it to be too heavy because our engines are all that powerful at the moment. <clears throat> Some stack separators. And then the trusty SRBs. Quite straight. And uh, as always, realize I need to just move the sep se separators up. And there we go. So support for takeoff, and then we just need to add some aerodynamics to the damn thing. And that should be good enough. Should be, he says. Famous last words. <coughs> Just saved it and we're off to the launch pad. And then I realise that we need to redo the staging again. only three stages to it really anyway solid rocket boosters main engines and then small engine <clears throat> so here we go two times speed again Let's take off And this time, what we want is this in a polar orbit, and there's a reason for that, is so that 
um, it becomes more visible. It's like more visible. Uh, there's more visible more of the times of things that are further away. So we are headed north. Tipping it over. Having a bit of a moment. Will it bring itself back? Yes, it will. So now we need to try and bring back to zero. Just even it up a bit and then fire again. So you can see the prograde uh, target moving down. So we're not going to be perfectly on a polar orbit, but that's not really what I need to be. I don't really want to be on a per perfect polar orbit anyway. So we're just going to circularize. Now that we're in space, out of the 75,000 meters of atmosphere. Extend solar panels. Extend our antenna, keep us in contact with the network, this is an unmanned probe. Burning, 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 burning. Now we've just got enough fuel to be able to circularize. So we get rid of that stage. So now we want to get our orbit out to approximately the same distance as what the other satellites are at, so about a million meters, or a thousand kilometers. Time accelerate around to that maneuver node. Gonna realize the dirt in a minute. <laughs> so there we go, and we're gonna circularize there. Turn that down for a bit more accuracy. Execute that node. Just get onto the node itself and then type accelerate. So we just completed a contract there. So you can see I'm in contact with the satellite network that's orbiting Kerbin, which means I'm constantly in contact with the KSC. Burn. This takes a good few seconds, just over a minute and a half. So there we go. So we set our target to the moon with our small dish and we're going to change that to active vessel. Like that. And that completes that contract for us for pointing the dish out to the moon. Or to any body outside Kerbin. So there we go. That's the burn complete. Now what I'm going to try and do is do this scan setup. What it's going to tell me is we are too high to be able to do this. Yep, so that mission is done. So we've done a science experiment from outside, from our Kerbin. It 
against Valentina. Dwarf Star Orbiton Iron Star. And what we see here is it's not scanning. And I'm like, why? But for why is this not working? We have to go back to the drawing board. So I decided to have a complete rejig of this. I'm like, this is the right one, but the altitude maxes 500 kilometers, as I just suddenly realize. So I need to keep it in a lower orbit whilst I can complete this contract. So. Jeb. And I kind of decide also that there's no need to have that huge dish at this moment in time. So I am going to put on the smaller one. And it's not one that snaps into place properly, so I have to guess it. not a bad gas in the end. Alright, so I'm now going to add a bunch more radar dishes so I can connect to multiple targets. <coughs> this gives me a few more options. And then we're going to just launch that again. And we are going north as before. Starting our gravity turn. Still difficult being this top heavy. There we go, kill the engines and get ready to circularize. We're at a much steeper angle this time. I think control the gravity burn to go north quite as well, but it's good enough. So accelerate into the node and we're burning. Get rid of that fairing, deploy our solar panels. And the antenna. Again, just enough fuel to complete the orbit burn. Ah, 
And so now we're in a circular orbit, we start the scan at a much lower temperature, and we can see it's actually working this time. So you can see it says 0% out of 70. So there we go. Point the dish out to the moon again to complete that contract. We can transmit some science to complete that contract. And now it's just a waiting game on that until we move it out into the proper orbit later on. Clear all them contract completions. We are good. You can see it's now actually properly scanning the surface of Kerbin. So that is all good. So we haven't got the, the SATCOM relay in its proper position yet, but getting there, doing a contract on the way. So I'm looking at our contracts and our money, and we're pretty good. So anything else we can pick up on the way? Not much at the moment. And it's these plane missions. But that's it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. And we will be back next time for more contracts, more than likely. Thank you very much. And goodbye.